Today on Reese Dixon, we are building this drum shade light fixture from scratch. Hi everybody, it's Teresa with ReeseDixon.com and I am continuing work on my master bedroom makeover. Today I'm going to be making a light fixture and I'm going to be making it from scratch. I've got more supplies from my friends at Doris, and so this is a project I initially created for them, but with myself in mind, of course. So what I've got is in the corner of my bedroom, you know, like most bedrooms, I've got a center fixture with a, a ceiling fan, but in the corner, there's this one spot that just seems to be crying out for something to go there. So I'm going to be making this lamp it's on my side of the bed and with all of the reading that i do in bed and the needlepoint i do in bed i can always use more light on me <laughs> so, that sounded so wrong i can always use more light on me <laughs> you know what i mean anyway so we're going to be making this lamp um here's what you'll need these are macrame hoops this one is 16 inches in diameter, and I got two of these. And these are gonna be like the top and bottom to create a drum shade. And then this is floral mesh. You can find this anywhere, but Doris, of course, is where I got mine, where I'm partial. Um, and so what I've done is cut a, a piece that would go all the way around this hoop and then overlap. So let me switch out here and show you what that looks like. See, so here's my piece and it's the full width of the mesh and then long enough so that it wraps all the way around. And what I did was take the end and wrap it over this hoop and then used my sewing machine to stitch all the way around and sew that in place. So I've got, here's all this left um, overlapping. I left myself a ton of room here so that I could make sure that I didn't make this too small on the other end. That's what I've been learning doing this, is it's really easy to shrink your tube before you need to. So instead of sewing this seam shut, I'm going to skip all the way to the other side and repeat that process. I'll take my big hoop here and then at the bottom, wrap this all the way around and I'll use some pins here to keep it in place as I go. It's a little bit tricky because it's mesh, you know, <laughs> there's not much to grab onto. But so I'll pin that all the way around, sewing it in place so that I'll be left with this big tube shape with this hole in the middle. And so then I'll sew that up. But I'll show you this point so that you can make sure that you uh, have enough room to go all the way around and keep everything straight. So next up, more pinning and sewing. And then I'll show you from there. Here's my two hoops, both attached to the ends. And so now you can see how this is going to be my drum shade. This is the hardest part of the whole thing. If you can master this, then you are set from here on out. One thing I did find really helpful when I was sewing this around the hoop is to use a zipper foot. And so that way you could get really close to this. Uh, it still did get hung up on the mesh a little bit. So this might be one of those projects that's actually easier to do by hand than with the sewing machine. Um, but either way, it'll work. You can do it. Okay, so here is where that seam meets in the middle. And I've already got it pinned in place. Now what I did with on one side is I folded the edges over. This mesh unravels extremely easily and gets really pokey. So you're gonna wanna have a nice finished edge there. So that's folded in on itself and I've got it pinned in place and I'm gonna sew it right on that, that folded edge and then I'm probably gonna do another line there. And then we'll have that part done. I might even, take these on the inside here and fold them over on themselves a couple of times. Once again, just to get those edges finished so that you're not getting any unraveling. Um, okay, so that's the actual drum part. So now I'm going to start decorating it. I've got these. These are called Rolls of Bling and they are just these rhinestones that come in these 
three inch strips and I've cut them all. This, this pile here is three rolls of that bling that I cut into equal size strips. And what I'm gonna do is pin these all over my shade just in like random, I might go up and down. I don't know, I'm gonna play with it and see how I like it. Um, just in random configurations, just kind of spread all over this to add more sparkle and a little more of that art deco mid-century, well, yeah, more mid-century than art deco, but anyway, you know what I'm saying? More of that design aesthetic that I like so much. So seam up the back, finish up all those edges, and then I'm going to sew these on. After I, I'm just gonna pin them in place while I arrange them all, and then just sew them on by going down the sides and around, just sewing into a square to get the look that I want. I am so in love with how this bling is looking now that it's sewn on. I love that it's kind of reminiscent of a skyline, but it's still abstract. I think it is so awesome. And the truth is that I'm doing it this way, I'm sewing it on, because it was actually a screw up. It's another one of my hidden little miracles that happen when you're creating. You think you're gonna do something, you screw up royally and it becomes something great. So it's just a little happy accident. I intended to have the whole lampshade made out of this, but I didn't order enough. I only ordered enough for the diameter instead of the circumference, so I needed a ton more. I didn't have anywhere near enough to do what I initially wanted to do. So this is what I'm doing now, and I actually like it so much better. I just, I just love those happy accidents as we're creating. Okay, so anyway, to finish this off, you could stop here, theoretically, but I don't want to see the naked bulb hanging from here. I want a little bit more um, light coverage, a little, a little more coverage in general. So I'm going to line this. So this is what I've done. This is some uh, crushed taffeta fabric that I actually dyed to get this great purpley gray color. And I love how because of the texture of the fabric, it's kind of modeled. I just love how that turned out. So, so for this piece, what I did was fold it in half making sure that it was long enough to fit the full length of the shade. And then in doubled over, I cut it so that it measured 26 and a half inches, okay? So from 26 and a half inches, I sewed it together at 25 inches to make a tube. And that is what's big enough to make the, the tube that will line the inside of your, of your drum shade but you'll still have an inch and a half left over. So what I did with that is a technique called a French seam. I've done these on other projects on my channel before and I just love it, it's so easy, but it, provide, it creates just the cleanest, just beautiful edge. And since with this project, all the sides are gonna be visible. If there were extra seams, pressed up against the shade, you'd see it, and if they were facing the light, you'd see it when from up above. So I wanted to make every part of this as clean and finished as possible, and that's where the French seams come in. So this seam right here is where I initially sewed my tube together. And then with this part, you just take that extra inch and a half, you fold it, you fold it again, and then you sew it down. So what you're creating is this little pocket that has all the raw edges tucked inside there. It's similar to when you do a hem, you fold the raw edges over and then you fold it again to cover all those raw edges when you do a hem. And it, it, so it's basically the same way, it's just that you're starting from a seam instead of you know, just the end of your fabric. So with that French seam done, I hemmed both edges and now we're ready to install this into my shade. So I'm just going to pin it around the very top right underneath that, that hoop. I'm gonna do that on the top and the bottom and sew all the way around to secure it in place. And, um, and then we just have to put in the light fixtures. And so we're, we're getting there, we're almost done. Okay, so I've got some more sewing to do and then we'll start with our electrical work. Thank <sighs> you. 
This is your lamp hardware, and it is so easy to put together that I did it by accident. <laughs> I was just checking to make sure that I knew what I was doing, and I already assembled it. <laughs> so so uh, basically, you need this little lamp socket, and you need the wire that you can plug in, and both of these you can buy easily from a million different kits, and then you need a lamp heart. But the trick is I installed my lamp harp before I installed the socket. So I ran the wire with my plug through the bottom of the lamp harp and then fed it into the lamp socket and attached it to the little, there's little screws that are in here that you attach it to so that you keep the wires connected to, to make the, um, the connection. Anyway, I'm obviously not an electrician. You can follow all of the instructions on the packaging that you buy with this and you, you cannot go wrong since it's so simple. I did it by accident. Okay, so this with this hardware setup, typically on a lamp, you'd have this lamp part, this uh, harp, you'd have it sitting like that on the lamp finial and then um, it would screw into place, but we're going to do this upside down. It's going to be a hanging shade, a hanging fixture, and so what this lamp harp does is give us a little bit stronger of a foundation to hold the shade. So this is going to hang down from the center, and this is going to hang down from the ceiling, and the shade is going to be suspended on this lamp harp. So we have to create something to suspend on that. So that's why I have these wires. This is just a thick gauge of wire. Any kind will work. And I cut it to measure 20 inches so that it would measure the 16 inches across and then I would have a little extra on each end to wrap it around. So because your mesh is so wide open, you can just feed this right through your mesh and then, uh oh, I don't want to get my dress cut. And then wrap it around on itself. I've got some pliers here to help me with that job. And then keeping that pretty close to straight, I'll stretch it across the other side. And if you have extra, like see how if I just connected it, it would still be a little bit long. I'm going to cut a little bit of that off so that I, I want it to be pretty taut right across the middle here. I don't want it to be hanging visible. Um, so I'm gonna cut a little bit of this off and then when I wrap it around, I'm gonna pull it as tight as I can without distorting the shape of the shade. So I'm gonna push right across the very middle here and then through. And then as I wrap that over, just get that as tight as I can make it. So I'm gonna do this two more times, at least two more, let me think, maybe I'll do it four more times. I'll see how it starts to shape up. I'll do this either two or three more times um, so that I can make in the center a really sturdy um, centerpiece to rest on that lamp part. And then once I've got that, I can just feed that plug right through. So I did go with four wires because I wanted a really strong base. And before I put the last one in place, while things were still flexible, I threaded the plug up through there. And so now you can see how that, hopefully you can see, got a kind of a funky angle here, that harp just hits all of the, that little nest of wires you made. And now this whole thing can suspend so perfectly. So I'm going to go install this in this perfect spot that inspired it all and show you what it looks like when it's all set. Okay. Now, before I get off the ladder, I have to make sure I've put a light bulb in there. Now we can see how it's going to look. Oh my gosh. Oh, I think that looks so amazing! Oh. Once it's 
it's done spinning, I'll have to find a way to run my cord down to the outlet and do it in a way that isn't an eyesore. So I'll probably run it along the crown molding or the corner of the wall. But I am just so excited about it. I, I have made light. <laughs> like it feels so powerful to do something like woodworking when we built our bed frame, like electrical work, something that we think of as so hard and yet if we break it down, it doesn't have to be and we can make, make amazing things. So I love what this brings to this spot in my bedroom and uh, how gorgeous it is. I just, anyway, I, I, I could go on and on about it because I'm so proud of it. But I hope that this was inspiring to you to show you that you can make amazing things. You can solve your own dilemmas. I do not need to buy some crazy expensive chandelier when I could make this out of macrame hoops and floral mesh. Amazing! <laughs> so if you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll help you out. Be sure and subscribe to the channel so you can see what crazy hairbrain thing I'm going to make next. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye!